Hello again, friends. I've been debating about which video I wanted to cover next. I have many ideas in my head for fun decks, decks that aren't as impacted by this particular format, to the best mix deck that I currently have for it, and I'm considering which decks would be more fun or less fun. But there is a particular facet to deck building in this meta that has not been confirmed yet. One card which was errata during this time frame in the original game that, if left unchecked, both gives us a fourth S tier deck and opens up some of the wonkiest, silliest builds imaginable. I don't know how they're going to handle Barkle, but I figure, before we can really look into what other impacts the game will have, discussing the single highest impact card in the entire format, and that is not an exaggeration, would be an incredible place to start. Barkle as a card accomplishes several things all at once. It guarantees your grade 2 ride, it guarantees you having 5 soul when you ride to grade 3, it can be utilized in an Alfred deck behind Alfred to call free 5k boosters for entirely free card advantage, and you don't even get any type of issues building your rows because Alfred doesn't need to have a booster behind it to rest. So other than its forerunner effect, none of what it does actually cares about whether or not your vanguard is a royal paladin. Just with this, the card was considered so problematic that they removed the forerunner ability from the card, as set one royal paladins were the best deck in format for three sets, and only one deck even got close to that, which was Tsukuyomi. And even Tsukuyomi ended up getting hit later on with its own card restrictions. Of course, there was even more that you could do with Barkle. If you wanted, you could run this with Flogals in any given deck to get a function similar to V-Series Skull Witch Nimmin. Shadow Paladins generally require you to retire other Shadow Paladins, but there are some generic requirements for retirement. So you could use it as a fodder generator for Tyrant Deathrex, who hits 23k with an 8k boost, which would be incredible in a crossride format. You could use it in a Safe Read or Surakaiser deck to have only two Grade 2s, both Blaster Blade, then transition to drive checking either Triggers or Grade 3s to make Morikawa incredibly proud. This card's versatility is insane, and it being errated was entirely justified, especially when by the time it was safe to unban it, they decided to print certain cards to make those Flogals more like 14k boosters, or 15k boosters, instead of... Uh, you know, just 5k boosters. So that was a bit dumb. While my favorite decks involving Barkle were variants of my 17 grade 3 Royal Paladin deck, which included cards like Gornamont, which gains 10,000 power whenever a grade 3 enters your Vanguard circle, well, grade 3 Royal Paladin, or cards like Pendragon, which uh, during the main phase, after you wrote it, you could write another grade 3 from your deck, and cards like Xenon, which checks the top card of your deck if it's a grade 3 Royal Paladin, you write it. Uh, cards like those would give you a bunch of outs to make this card get ridiculously strong. We're talking 30, 40,000 power, and during that time frame of set 10 was huge. Uh, in this particular format, I'd say most fun decks you could do with this would have to be 16 or 17 grade 3 decks, but Royal Paladin only has one card, Butterfly Dagger Bridget, to benefit from having so many grade 3s currently. So at this point, I cannot recommend a Royal Paladin variant of the 17 grade 3 deck. There are other decks with clear advantages for a Barkle skewed ratio strategy, though. To preface, I'm not saying these decks are good, just that they're fun. So the first one that comes to my head would be a General Safe Read Spike Brothers deck. So General Safe Read is, when, you dri when your drive check reveals a grade 3 Spike Brothers, you may call that card to an open rearguard circle. Uh, that obviously means that you would have to get rid of whatever Spike Brother was in the front row rear guard in order to get all of these multiple attacks off, but Spike Brothers makes that pretty easy with cards like Juggernaut Maximum, which is just Soul Blast, it's a 16k attacker, shuffle it back into your deck, and Skydiver, when it hits, doesn't have to be Vanguard, move this to Soul, and then you can call a card, a Spike Brothers from your hand to open rear guard circle. So that gives you a bunch of outs to get rid of the Spike Brothers that you have in your hand, and or on your board and to open it up so that Safe Read, when he does drive check those grade threes, can get more Spike Brothers out there and so that you can get those extra attacks in. Um, Asura Kaiser would also accomplish something similar. Uh, Asura Kaiser is when you drive check a grade three Nova Grappler, choose one of your rear guards and stand it. One of the nice things about this is that it can stand non-Nova Grapplers. So if you have a grade one Royal Paladin booster and you want to stand that because you hit a stand trigger and you already stood a side row, or if you just want to stand a Royal Paladin that you happen to have on the field anyway, because you need to run those grade ones in order for Barkle to be able to be pushed back with Forerunner anyway, then you could do that. 
And another cool thing is that with cards like Juggernaut Maximum and Asura Kaiser, they are 11k so long as you have another card of their clan out. So they aren't like the newer 11ks, which lose 2,000 power if you play it in a mixed deck. Instead, it gains or it loses the 2,000 power if you don't have another rear guard out of its clan. So uh, with all of that being said, I can't really recommend the Nova Grappler version as much as I like Asura Kaiser. Right now, all of the grade three Nova Grapplers are basically 10k vanillas. Shubelia is the only exception to that, and she's just Soul Blast 3 on hit draw card. Um, none of them get bonus power, so you'd have to use a card like Rocket Hammerman, rest that to give bonus power to your rear guard so that when you stand it back up, it still has that power. And I don't think that that's going to be a particularly effective strategy because you're sacrificing 6k power to turn a 16k row into a 12k row, hoping to stand it again. So you're already just basically losing the same amount of power anyway. Um, so those are two potential decks you could do, but the one that I think is going to be the best, the third deck and my personal favorite of the high grade three decks for this format is the Kagero variant. Kagero has multiple grade three units that get bonuses for having additional grade threes. The first is Dragonic Waterfall. The second is Dragon Monk Gojo and Dragonic Vol Blade would be the third. These are all massively benefited by having additional grade threes. Waterfall allows you to discard a Kagero grade three in order for it to gain 10,000 power. When you do so, then he is already attacking for 13K against the Vanguard, so he's 21K unboosted. With an 8K boost, that brings you all the way up to, or uh, 23K unboosted, this brings you up to 31K with the, with the 8K boost, which is an insane level of power. Dragon Monk Gojo retires a grade one or less unit whenever you drive check a grade three Kagero, making, a, um, making it possible to snipe four runners and uh, you can also snipe any back row units with it. And then with uh, Dragonic Vol Blade, uh, two to pass effectively becomes a non-option. He gains 5,000 power whenever you drive check that grade three. So because of that, that means that the odds of you hitting either a grade three or a trigger twice in a row is 45%. So you basically have a 50-50 chance of breaking through a two to pass, which makes the two to pass effectively too high of a gamble to ever reliably perform which means that if they're going to be guarding against Ballblade, they have to guard against him as if he was already 20k, which is an incredible amount of pressure for the singular card to perform. Now, because you want to run extra grade threes and those are only 12, the other grade three that you could run would be Dragonic Overlord, who is going to be 16k if you counter blast three and can take out all of their front row, which in conjunction with Gojo means that they're losing a good chunk of their back row. They're losing a good chunk of that front row. So they're going to be bleeding cards like crazy. And if you run stand triggers in this deck, Dragonic Overlord will stand as a 21k rear guard. And if they blocked for any of their rear guards already, they're going to have to now throw out an extra two cards to stop the attack going into their rear guards again, or they're going to lose their rear guards and then also take a damage. So all in all, this deck is pretty pretty solid for pressure offense it snowballs card advantage into your favor but obviously it has an incredible drawback which is that you have so many grade threes that you don't have that much shield value and you are severely limited in your capacity to run perfect guards because you need to have a royal paladin grade one to pull back barkle so it loses out a little bit on that defense but it's an incredibly fun deck so on the note of uh, barkle's forerunner effect I could see the removal of Barkle's Forerunner effect status uh, being, being maintained as it was during this time in order to make the format authentic to how it was played at the time, but we already have confirmed changes to the format, such as G-Assist and making the set one deck of the main character unable to be played in a vintage format seems a bit counterproductive to the theme of nostalgia. As things stand, I am not aware if they have announced whether or not Barkle would be errated to remove its Forerunner, but if it's not, I just wanted to bring up how much impact it's going to have on the game. Anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.